In this chapter, we're going to be going over the slope of a curve at a single point. So previously, what we've done, we've done uh, the concept of slope for a straight line, and now we're going to be doing it to more general curves. So before we do that, we have to talk about what a tangent line to a curve is at a point. So starting with uh, tangent lines here, uh, just for a little background, uh, tangent is from Latin for tangens, and it means touching. So that actually tells us uh, what it is. A tangent line to a curve is a line touching the curve. It's a line touching the curve at one point and should have the same direction as the curve at the point of contact. So same direction, that's very important. So for example, we have this semicircle here uh, in blue and then we have this point, point P, and then we see the tangent line at point P. So we can see the tangent line seems to be in the same direction as that point of contact. So for example, we could have had a tangent line over here. That tangent line would have been something like this. We could have had a tangent line right here at the top, and that tangent line would be like this. So you can see how a tangent line touching it at one point, and it has the same direction as, that, uh, as the curve at that point. And let's go a little bit past circles here with tangent lines. So we have this new graph, this new curve right here, this blue curve. And P1 and P5, or sorry, P3, P1 and P3, at those points, they have the correct tangent line drawn because it's once again in the direction of the curve. Whereas you can see P2, P4, and P5, those are not tangent lines because it's not in the direction of the curve. It almost looks like P4 is a tangent line. It's pretty close, but I think the tangent line here would actually be a little bit more like that for P4, or a little bit more like that or something. Okay, and then if we click this link right here, down here, it takes us to how a tangent line moves along a curve. So we have this black curve, and then the red line is the tangent line at each point. So the tangent line is moving left to right along the curve, and we can see how it essentially has this same direction as the curve. Okay, so that is a start for tangent lines. Now let's get into the slope of a curve at a point. So when we say the slope of a curve at a point, it's actually the slope of the tangent line to the curve at that point. So let's go ahead and uh, see this example here. So we have the function f of x equals x squared, so we know that that's our parabola. So here's f of x, and we have the tangent line at point p, which is the point 1 comma 1. So we can see this tangent line and we want to know the slope of the graph at point P. So we want the slope at this point on the curve. And what we can do, since we're given the tangent line, we can figure out the slope of the tangent line, which is going to be, which is actually written here. We go to the right one and then we go up two. So that's going to be our change in y is 2, our change in x is 1, and just to remember, uh, just a reminder, uh, delta is change, so change in y is 2, change in x is 1, so that means the slope, the slope at p is going to be the change in y over the change in x, Right, just y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and that's going to be uh, 2 over 1, which is 2. So we say that the slope at point P is 2 because that is the slope of the tangent line. All right, so now for the next thing, slope of a graph as a rate of change. The slope of a curve at a point, which we just said is the same as the slope of the tangent line at the point, measures the rate of change of the curve as it passes through that point. So let's see this example here. 
Uh, in this graph below, we have the apartment complex uh, used approximately 400 gallons of oil per day. Suppose that we keep a continuous record of the oil level in a storage tank. What is the physical significance of the slope of the graph at point P? So let's go ahead and just look at the graph first. We have the horizontal x-axis is the time. So we have 12 a.m. Uh, to 12 or 12 p.m. And, and 12 a.m. And then we have March 5th to March 6th. So we have two days here. And then the y-axis is the oil level. And if we're looking for the slope of the graph at point P, we can think of it as the slope of the tangent line at point P because they represent the same thing. And since we just mentioned that the slope is a rate of change, we can say that the slope of the graph at point P represents the rate of decrease. We know it's a decrease because this is a decreasing line. It's falling left to right. So it represents a decrease of oil level, of oil level at 7 a.m. on March 5th. So it's that instantaneous rate of change. It's the instantaneous level of decrease, in this case, of the oil level. Okay, and then for uh, one more thing here, we have slope formulas. So what we've seen so far is that the slope of a straight line is constant, which we know, and it does not depend where we are on the line. No matter what interval we're looking at, the slope of a line is the same. It's always constant. So this is obviously not the case when we're dealing with other curves. The slope is not constant. And as we're going to see moving forward uh, in this course, that uh, we can actually compute the slopes. So let's look at an example here. If we have the slope of the tangent line to the graph of y equals x squared at the point 1, 1, and we know that the slope is 2, so that's going to be the point 1, 1 right here. And let's just say here's the tangent line with slope of 2. And then we have the slope of the tangent line at 3 comma 9 is 6. All right, it should be a 3 down here, not a 6. So we have the point right up here, 3 comma 9. If we took a look at that tangent line, it might look something like that. And that slope would be 6. So we can see that the slopes of the tangent lines are different on this parabola depending where we are on the curve. So for the parabola y equals x squared, we're going to see uh, later on, once again, that the slope at each point is 2 times the x-coordinate of the point. So what that means is that if the slope of the graph, uh, the, for the slope of the graph y equals x squared, the slope is 2 times x. So the slope of the graph y equals x squared is 2 times whatever the x-coordinate is. And we call this a slope formula. Okay, so let's go ahead and just take a look at this example here. We have what is the slope of the graph of y equals x squared at the point 3 fourths comma 9 sixteenths. So we know that the slope formula for y equals x squared is 2x and that means if we use 2x and we plug in our point and our x coordinate is 3 fourths. That's going to be 2 times 3 fourths. And if you simplify that, that gives us uh, 6 over 4. Multiply those together. And that simplifies to 3 halves. So the slope of at the point 3 fourths comma 9 sixteenths on the curve y equals x squared is 3 over 2. So that would be the slope of the tangent line. And let's go ahead and see this last example. So we have the same uh, function and we have the same coordinate, right? y equals x squared at that point. Now we want the equation of the tangent line. Anytime you want the equation of the tangent line, more often than not, we are starting with point slope form for the equation of a line. So this is point slope form. 
we know our point x1, y1 is given to us. And we actually just found out the slope in the previous question, right? The slope is 3 halves at that point. So if we go ahead and plug everything in, that's y minus 9 sixteenths equals 3 halves times x minus 3 fourths. And we can actually just stop right there because it doesn't tell us to put it in uh, it doesn't tell us to put it in slope intercept form so we can just stop right there and point slope form okay so it all came down to us knowing the slope formula for y equals x squared to be able to find this slope so we can find the equation of the tangent line at that point so maybe we should just solve this for y real quick and, and graph it if we solve this for y, I'm just going to cheat a little bit, we would have to distribute the 3 halves and then add 9 sixteenths to the other side. And we would get it, end up getting slope intercept form, slope intercept form y equals 3 halves x minus 9 over 16. So if we graph this, just so we have an idea, it's nice to always have a visual when we're doing this. Here's y equals x squared. And let's say the point for 3 fourths comma 9 sixteenths is right here. So we just found the slope of the tangent line through that point in the previous one. And we just found the equation of the tangent line. So the equation of that line is y equals 3 halves x minus 9 over 16, which seems reasonable. It, it doesn't seem like a steep slope and it seems like a reasonable y-intercept. Okay, so that is it for this chapter.